welcome back to this video series working with scenario management in Visum and PDB Hub. My name is Anna Elert and I'll guide you through the various aspects of scenario management in our software. So we are now ready to start the demonstration in the software in Visum. In this part two, we focus on the basics of a scenario management project. So we now start our demonstration in Visum. First, we open our version file. This version file will be the starting point for the project. Within this version file, the network is coded with links, nodes, zone, connectors, etc., as well as the public transport supply is coded. We have already assignment matrices for car and public transport. Currently, there are no assignment results, and that is recommended for a base version in a scenario management project. So now that we have this version file, we can create a project. To do so, we go to the scenario management new project. We will create the project in this directory. We will call it scenario management. We will use the currently loaded version file as a base version for the project, and we use a file based database now. Once you confirm that, you will see the project view. That is the view where you manage all the data in that project um, via this project window. There are different tabs. You can already see here the basic settings. Under the basic settings, you have an area for log entries. So here can, you can already see that we have created the project uh, with a certain base version. And further log entries are created automatically. So whenever you edit, add, or delete objects in your scenario management project. So then you have here um, project directories, which is much simpler than you know from Visum itself. So by default, the projectory points to shared data. That is a folder where you can add any additional files that you are use that you are using in conjunction with the project. So there's one alternative, um, the folder of a particular scenario. So that is another option that you can use, but Usually, shared data is fine. So this is also a good moment to show you what has happened in the Windows Explorer. Here we can see our scenario management project. So when you create a scenario management project, um, there's automatically a file system created. You do not need to worry about these different directory because all that is managed via the project view, except for the folder shared data. So we recommend to not touch any other folders or edit files in those folders. When you need to pass project data to someone else, to a colleague, so it makes sense to create a zip archive of the main directory under which the project was saved and pass that zip arch archive to the colleague. So before we start now, we copy um, some files that I have prepared in the directory of shared data.
And you can see in Visum that these files can now be accessed via the drop down men menus, or also, for example, filter files can be accessed via this shared data folder now. So, um, coming back to the project view. So via this basic settings, you can also edit the base version. In order to do so, you click the button and you get this notification bar on the top. And you can now edit the base version. So do any changes that you would like to do. And once you are finished with your changes, you use the finish button in order to uh, complete your changes. You cannot use any save button here. You need to use the notification bar. I will now cancel. Once you have finished or canceled, you get back to the project view. So on the left side, there are the most relevant components of a scenario management project. So scenarios, modifications, procedure parameters. Over the course of the series, we will also get to the other tabs here. But for now, we focus on the core elements. So we start now our project by creating a modif our first modification. Uh, we give it a code and a name. Currently, we have only the base version, and this is where we base this modification on. So what happens now? The base version is loaded. Now you get again this notification bar, and you can start edi editing the modification. Um, in order to have a better view, what we need to do, um, I have loaded some graphic parameters. So we can see what we have to do now. I will first split this link to create a node. And once we have the node, we can create the link, which represents the bridge in our model. So we need to. Um, choose an appropriate link type. And now we can already finish our first modification. So now we do a second modification. This time it will be not a network change, it will be a demand change. We would we will change the demand that is um, our future demand for 2030. Also, this modification will be based on the base version. Again, the base version is loaded. And what we do now is we change the matches. So we assume now our demand increases by 5%. So that means we need to multiply our existing matrix with a fixed factor, which we have done now. We finish our modification. And now we have here two modifications, one a network change and one a demand change. So out of these two modifications, we create now our scenarios. Our first scenario is um, a base network. So we call that base 2025, and it consists of the base version only. It has no modification because there are no changes compared to the base version. We create a second scenario that is a do something scenario for 2025, 
which consists of the, of the base and the bridge. So that means we need to add a modification here, the first modification, and now we have a scenario which includes a bridge. We create a future scenario for 2030, which is composed of the base version and the demand for 2030. So that means we need to add the second modification. And now we create a do something scenario for 2030, which includes both modification. So the base, the bridge, and the demand for 2030. So here we include both modification. So now we have created our four scenarios. What we now need to check is the procedure parameter sets, uh, because this is currently here the one from the base version. If we check the base version, we can see that the procedure parameters are empty, and therefore we need to create new procedure parameter sets. So for now, we will simply use um, an assignment for PRT. We use the currently loaded procedure parameters because that are the one from the base version, which is empty. We can now edit this procedure parameter set. We include two procedures, one deleting assignment results, and another one for the PRT assignment. And we will assign the car matrix, and we use the equilibrium assignment with the default parameter. We now finish this procedure parameter. And now we can allocate the new procedure parameter to our scenarios. You can also use copy and paste here. And now we have our four scenarios with the corresponding modifications. And we have also a procedure parameter set. So now we are ready to calculate our scenarios. So we Use the corresponding button here, choose all the scenarios, and now we calculate our scenarios. So the four scenarios are now calculated. That is quite quick. And now, besides the input scenarios, we have also for each of the scenarios a result version. So the result version can be opened. For example, here, load the results of the scenario two. And you can now start analyzing these um, scenarios by, for example, using some prepared graphic parameters with a car assignment or any other prepared global layout file that you have in the shared data folder. So with this, we are at the end of part two. So at the end, I would like to summarize the learnings from this second part. Uh, we have seen how to create and manage a scenario management project. We have learned how to create 
simple modifications and procedure parameter sets. And we have seen how to create scenarios with the corresponding modifications and procedure parameter sets. And we have at the end calculated the scenarios to obtain scenario results.